Hello, welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 33 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about the ASP.NET calendar properties and events. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 32 of this video series. Let's drag and drop a calendar control onto the web form. Now, depending on the purpose that we use this calendar for, we can actually associate a caption to the calendar. And the way we do that is by using the caption property. Let's say, for example, I'm using this calendar to display training dates or something. I can associate a caption to that. So training calendar. And then we can as uh, align this caption using uh, caption align property. Let's say I want to align that on the top I can do that and so obviously as you can see here the caption is shown with its alignment and the next property that we'll look at is the day header style now this property has several style properties that can be uh, you know customized to change the look and feel of the day header now if you're wondering what is day header you know this Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday etc that you can see here and how do we change that go to the properties window and then within the properties window you can see day header style property and you can change a lot of style properties here for example the back color let's say I want to change that to red I can select and change that to red and for color maybe I want to change it to white we can do that so all these properties can be changed so that's day header style and day name format if you look at this the day name you know it's currently three letters Monday Tuesday Wednesday so we can change that as well and the values that it takes are short first two letters or first letter shortest you know just by looking at the values that this property takes we can guess what it might be for example if I just select first two letters it's going to show just the first two letters on the other hand if you just say first letter we only get the first letter so that's a day name format property and if I say shortest again I get the first two letters there first day of the week again another property which is interesting is the first day of the week by default here for this calendar the first day of the week is Monday let's actually put that to you know full so that if you put that to full you get the full name of the day but instead of that let's change that to short which give us the three letters now look at that the first day of the week by default is Monday you can change that if you want to depending on your shift timings or shift days you know to suit your needs for example let's say the first day of my week is Wednesday I can select that next previous format now if you look at this next previous format is set to custom text so meaning you know we can set that custom text there so next month text here we are using ampersand GT semicolon which stands for you know greater than symbol or you can you know let's say instead of that one I want double you know greater than symbols I get that there similarly I can also change um, the prev month text in this case instead of that I want to less than symbols I can do that as well instead of that you know this next prev format actually takes other values as well for example short month so that will give us a three letter month name or I can say full month where it shows the full month name similarly we can select you know maybe day name format if you set that to full then we'll get full day and full month names there Okay, so those are some of the useful properties and the most useful property is the selection mode depending on this property you actually decide what elements you want to select within the calendar now let's set this to you know, maybe short and maybe short month okay now the next property is the selection mode by default the selection mode of the calendar is a day which means when we actually run this project and when we try to select dates we can only select a day within that calendar okay so I cannot select a week or a month now is it possible in the first place to select an entire week absolutely and how do we do that change the selection mode of the calendar okay so if you look at the selection mode of the calendar it actually takes three values 
So selection mode, currently it is day, but it can be day week, meaning you can select a day or an entire week, or day week month, where you can select a single day, the entire week, or the entire month. Let's say day week month. And the moment I do that, look at that, you know, I can select the week using this greater than symbol. I can select the entire month using this double greater than symbol. Now, are these customizable? Absolutely, you can change them as well. Okay, so select month text. Currently, it's like, you know, two greater than symbols. You can change that if you want to. Uh, for example, I can say select month. Okay, so the complete word will be displayed there. Similarly, select week text. We can say select week and that particular uh, text will be displayed there when you click that it selects the entire week let's go ahead and run this and see what actually happens when we do that so when I say select week look at that the entire week gets selected similarly I'm selecting this week if I say select month all the days from 1st to 30th of November are selected okay now an interesting point arises here now if I have selected all the days within that month then how do I select you know or retrieve the selected dates or if I select just this week so I want the selected dates that the user has selected on the server side so how do I retrieve them in the previous session of this video series we have seen you know if a user selects a single date then we use you know calendar one dot selected date that property gives us the selected date but if the user selects the entire week then how do I select those dates okay let's see that now obviously to select that this calendar control uh, exposes an event called selection changed event okay, whenever the selection in the calendar changes so now let's say if I want to retrieve the selected date we can use you know the selected date property of the calendar control so calendar one dot selected date let's say dot two short date string so now if we run this and when we select a date within that calendar control, the selected date will be written to the response stream. For example, here I'm selecting November 15, so that gets written. But on the other hand, look at this. I'm trying to select this week here. Now I am only getting the one date, the you know 21st of November, the first date there. But I want the, you know, the range of dates from 21 to 27, all the dates that I have selected. And how do we do that? To do that, there is another property the calendar control exposes called selected dates property. So this is going to return a collection of selected dates. So anytime we have a collection of something, we can use the for each loop, loop through each date, and then do whatever you want. In this case, we want to print the date out. So let's use a for each loop here. So for each, so we know that we are going to get back date time. Let's say, let's call that selected date time in calendar one dot selected dates and what do we want to do we want to print each date that the user has selected so let's say calendar one I mean we get the selected date into this variable so I'm going to use that and then print that out to short date string and then put an HTML break there get rid of this one all right. So now if we run this, if we select a single date, then we get that just that one date. But if I select a week, I get the entire week. So I select number 15th and let me select the entire week. I get all the dates within that week from 21st November to 27th November. On the other hand, if I select the entire month, I get all the dates within that month. Okay, so one of the events we have just discussed is the selection changed event. Other important events that this calendar control actually exposes are, you know, maybe day render event. We have discussed about this in the previous session of this video series. So when does this event get fired? This event gets fired, you know, whenever the day in the calendar control is rendered. Let's do one thing. Let's actually get rid of this calendar. Let's drag and drop another calendar control here and then auto format that so that it looks a little better. I'm selecting colorful there. Okay, so we have this calendar control here. Now, if I go to the properties of this calendar control, let's select day render event. Okay, so we have this, when does this day render event gets fired? Every time the day within that calendar control is rendered, that event is fired. So if you look at this, we have seven rows and seven columns. 
okay 7 into 7 49 times for each day this event gets fired okay now this is a very rich uh, event can, that can be used for a variety of purposes. Let's say, for example, you know, uh, what I want to do basically is within this month, you know, in the month of November, let's say all the event days are actually booked. You know, let's say this calendar is displaying a list of appointments available, but then all event days, two, four, six, eight, these are actually closed for bookings. So I want to put a red cross there, and then I don't want that to be selectable. Okay, is that possible to, to customize that in such a way? Absolutely. And the event that we use for that purpose is the day render event. So let's see how to actually do that. Okay, so if, and I want to do that only for the dates within the current month. So if it is another month date, I don't want to do that. So how do we check if the date belongs to current month? We can use this date render event args e object. So if e dot day dot and we can basically say is other month. So if this belongs to other month, then we know that property returns true. So it should not belong to other month. And e dot day dot. So day will basically give us the calendar day there. E dot day dot date and then we can say day which is nothing but the integer if that divided by 2 gives a 0 that means that's an even date so in that case what do we want to do we want to set the back color of the cell maybe to red and maybe the four color you know basically the font color to white and I want to bold the text so e dot cell dot font dot bold is equal to true and we want to put a red x, uh, x there so e dot cell dot text is equal to x and then we want to show it tooltip there when I hover my mouse over that cell it should show the tooltip you know this is closed for booking or just booked so e dot cell I want to set the tooltip so tooltip is equal to maybe I want to just show a message uh, booked okay on the other hand if it's any other date if it's an odd date then I want to show you know the tooltip as the date is available for booking so let's display the text there available okay that's all we have to do now if we run this as you might expect you know the day render event will be called for each day you know within that and look at that all the event dates they are you know the background color is um, red and then the four the x color is white and if when I move my mouse over here on the cell look at the cell uh, tooltip it says booked on the other hand if I move it here the tooltip says available so a lot of customization can be done using this day render event alright so the next event that we will examine today of the calendar control is the visible month changed event as the name suggests you know this event is fired when the is visible month in the calendar changes so let's actually double click that let's say response dot right month changed so now if we run this and then click that button I mean cl click this so that the month changes you no know, month changed event is fired now let's do something uh, you know interesting about this you know let's say for example when I change the month here I am changing from November to December and when I click this one I'm changing from December to January so as soon as I do that I want to figure out from which month to which month I have changed is there a way to do that so I want you to you know print a message here saying uh, month changed from January to February or February to March whatever um, so how do we do that how do we get the current month name and the month to which we have changed and that is using this month changed event args e object now if you look at this e here the month changed event args object it has two properties new date and previous date 
Okay. Now new date is the month that we are going to display and previous date is, is the current month that we are in. Okay. So what we basically can do, so new date is going to re return the new date and then when from that date I can actually get the month part of it. So month will give me an integer but then what I want to do is I want to display an English month name you know from Jan to February or February to March. So for that purpose let's write a simple function which takes in a month number and then return the name of the month as a string. So I have already written a simple method for that. Let's copy that and paste it here. So I'm going to have this private method and if you look at this method it's very simple and straightforward. All it's doing is it's taking in an integer month number and then it is switching on that integer. If that is 1, then it returns January, otherwise February, March, etc. Now what I'm going to do here, we know that this month property of the new date is going to return an integer. So I'm going to pass this to this method. Okay. So let me call this method get date or get month name. And to this method, I am passing in the month number. Okay, so this method will actually return us the new month name. So I'm going to call this new month. Okay, so and if you want the current month or old month, you do the same thing, but then you change the argument that you're passing into this method. Instead of passing in their new date, you will say current, uh, I mean previous date. Okay, and all we have to do at this time, response dot write, maybe month changed from, we know what is the old month, so old month plus give a space to, and then maybe we can pass in new month. That's all we have to do. And this is a little helper method that's, you know, taking in a month number and then giving us a month name. Okay, so let's run this now. And as we change the month, it should actually display, uh, you know, from what month to what month we have changed. So currently we are on November 2012. When I click this, uh, month changes from November to December, similarly from December to January. Okay, so we have seen all the three events that the calendar exposes, you know, uh, selection change, day render, and visible month changed event. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.